Hi guys, this is Karen Sassine with Mosaic Mentoring and I am working with Smalty today and just wanted to share a little bit of time in my studio. I know some people like to, they, they constantly say, I'd love to just be over your shoulder and watch you work. So that's what I'm going to do today and I'll talk my way through what I'm doing so you guys can get an idea. Um, let's see if I can flip this. There we go. So this is my Asian garden piece and this is the, um, that's the full piece my full board. I know I've showed this before and this is what I've done so far. This is um, how many days? This is two days sitting and, and working. I've been working for a few hours today and I just zoom in here and this is very representational, not, um, not exact. This is my interpretation. So what I'm going to do, first I'm just going to show you um, my, my space, and then I'm going to sit and work. Um, I work small, uh, pretty detailed, so I only mix a small amount of thin set at a time. And I've got this nice tray right here that I um, can put some pieces on, and then I have these little lids that uh, over the years I've collected and love. And um, the nice thing about these is I can just kind of stack them up, and I've got different colors depending on what I'm working on. And it gives me the ability to pull the colors that I need. Um, right here is a diamond um, file. And let me show you which one it is. It's the Easy Lap Diamond Sharpener. Um, this one happens to be, what size is it? It's the model 61M. And I love it because um, you know, if I need to just grind something little, I can do that right here. This is my tabletop hardy, and I bought this at DeMosaico, and I got the one with the, I don't know what this stuff is called. Thank you, Cindy. She's a lovely palette. Um, this is like Teflon, and I do my nibbling right there, and I'll show you that in a few minutes. And then over here, I've got my other, uh, Hammer and Hardy, and, um, that's where I do larger cuts. So let me go ahead and put this, let's see. I'm gonna put this up here and I hope it's the right position and height. And we'll see if this works. So there we go. All right, how's that look? Okay, so let me get to work. I'm working right here on this little leaf and I'm working with some lighter colors. Um, let's figure out, nope, not that piece. So I've got some that I've already started to cut, but if I don't like them, I can always cut some more. Uh, I think I wanna go darker as I work my way down. That's kind of cool. I like that color. So I'm using this one side of a piece and it happens to be taller. So the first thing I'm going to do is cut it down. Not the best of cuts, but the cool thing is then I choke up and you can nibble at it. Unfortunately, my hammer or my hardy, excuse me, is not at the right height my regular one, I'm working on that. And I'll get it in the next week or so. But uh, because it's not at the right height, um, I'm having to use this one or rotating and it, it, I just, it's just not working right yet. So I don't, I'm not getting great cuts with my Hammer and Hardy um, because this is just too high. So I had to cut this down in height and now I'll hold it up and visualize and since I'm not using the hammer and hardy the whole time, I can use my nippers. So here's an example where it ended up being a little too curved and I need to straighten that out. So I'm actually gonna straighten it out with my hammer. Hmm. 
Mm, still needs to be a little bit more. Not quite the right angle. Let's see if I can get it. Nope, it's not, not doing what I want. So let's try this. There we go. Perfect. Now, time to cut this side. Once I get my log at the right height, then I'll probably do more with my hammer and hardy and less with my nippers. So, perfect piece. Is it too wide? No, I actually love it. Now I'm going to take it and dip it in my thin set. Now this thin set I've been using for a while now, so it's a little thicker than usual, but what you want is that perfect peak. Let's see if you could see that. Hold on, there we go. You want that, that nice peak. You don't want it too big, so that's actually perfect right there. And this way when I put the piece down and squish it, I don't get too much squish and it fits perfectly. Now, when I do get a little bit of squish, I'm always very meticulous when I work to clean up as I go. That's really important. You don't want to get dried squish. Um, if you do, then what, ha <clears throat> excuse me, what happens is that next piece doesn't fit cleanly next to it. So always important to clean up your squish. All right, next piece. Let's see where we're at now. Um, I think I'm going to finish this one off with, let's see, I have no clue whether this one is going to work. This one's been chopped up so much. I don't know if I'll be able to get a good piece out of it. We'll see. Yeah, maybe. The reason why I like the hammer and hardy over the nippers is sometimes with the nippers you get a um, like this little white part where the nippers break and I don't always love that. So let's say I wanted to just file this teeny tiny little bit off. Always make sure that you're diamond sander is wet because you don't want that dust getting in the air. It would be best to wear a mask while doing any of this stuff. Every time you cut a piece of glass, you get glass dust in the air. And safety is important. Triangles are hard to hold. You can tell when the thin set starts to get too old because when you when you put the piece in, first of all, it doesn't stick. And second, oop, I don't like that piece. Let's see if you can see. Uh, probably not. Where can I get the silicone containers, Lori asked. Um, I sell them. <laughs> I'll, po I'll post a link for you as soon as I finish the video. I love these silicone containers. When I'm finished with this, if, I, if I'm if i finished, but um, the silicones, um, I still have a uh, thin set left. I just leave it in there. And when it dries, you just pop it right out. So let's see, I'm a little 
bit of a stickler on this kind of stuff. You could see right here, it doesn't, it doesn't come to a point right there. It's a little bit squared off. So what I'm going to do, if I can with this, nope, I'm going to have to use my hammer, is make it come to a point. There, a little bit better. Yeah, a little bit of a perfectionist, Kim. <laughs> Kim Larson said I'm a uh, such perfectionism. Yep. You know, it's interesting though. Um, this piece, I'm trying to not be as perfect. I'm not. I, I'm not doing this in a painterly quality. Um, I'm not making it look exactly like the picture. I'm using some artistic license artistic freedom to be able to um, make it look how I want. Not really thinking about it. I'm just kind of working with values and shapes. And, you know, if it's not exact, it's fine because it's all starting to come together. Let's see. Next piece. So now I have to get another stem. Hmm. So now I've got to angle that down. That might be too skinny. I'll save that for another piece. Aprons really work great for uh, when you drop pieces. <laughs> Let's see, where can I get the orange tool? So the orange, let me show you something. Uh, give me a second and I'll explain it. Ah, there we go. I think I cut it too thin. So this is actually um, similar to one of the tools that I sell. Um, this is just a different handle version of it but it's the double-ended spatula. And I love it because one side goes this direction and the other side goes this direction. And it's this itty bitty fine little spatula. And I use this all the time, constantly, constantly using this. Um, I'll post a link for these, but um, this would have this one's a little different because it's got the orange covering on it, but the one that I sell, I love. And then the other tool, um, I use these all the time. These are my uh, angled tweezers, and I hand forge the back of them to um, to double as all kinds of things. I'll use it like to clean off the squish. I use it to pry pieces because this this side's pretty strong, and then. Another tool that I use all the time is my um, Italian spatula, the number 68 from uh, the Complete Sculptor, although they've been having some troubles during COVID. So um, I, I think you can still get these though. Yes, Rainbow Mosaic sells it, or Mosaic Mentoring, um, mosaicmentoring.com. Um, bunch of tools and my foundations course. So yeah. It's, um, I like to sell my favorite tools, the ones that I use all the time. All right, there we go. This is a good piece. So I have to angle this down. Perfect. Oop. When you're working with small tea, you're welcome, Kim. Um, 
you have to be concerned with all of the angles, um, your side angles, not just your top angles, because if it doesn't fit together neatly, then you're going to have wider spaces. So this piece right here that I just put down, what happened was the bottom part of it, it angled out. It, it kind of splayed out so I couldn't get a tight fit. So it was important for me to cut that little bottom part in so it fit better. And this actually has the, this is the edge of the small tea and it's got the curve. And I'm going to keep that. I kind of like it. All right, so here's an example. When your thin set's too dry and you dip it in and you barely get any thin set, then two things you need to do. First is re-stir it and just keep stirring until you get a nice, um, you get the, the softer, the wetter consistency on the top. So I'm just kind of pushing down like this. This is almost at the end. Um, I really only have just a little while longer to work with this and then I'll scrap it and make a new batch. Because you really, it, it's good to have the right consistency. There we go. Perfect little squish. So I'm gonna... Now since um, I did not paint my board, sometimes what I'll do is I'll actually take this little spatula and right up in here I push on push some thin set in there and it covers the board to make sure that it doesn't show through. There we go. And see how I flip this over and scrape all that extra squish off. Tighten it up. Let's see, yeah, you guys can see it. Where do you buy the tile? Um, so this is a mixture of Italian and Mexican, uh, Italian and Mexican smalty. And um, I have bought them from, um, was it two different places? So the Italian that I got, MDM, is from Di Mosaico. And the um, Orsoni and the Mexican, which is the Perdomo. So the, the Perdomo's the, the flatter, um, more cubed versus the Italian, which is rectangular, a little bit thicker. Um, both the Mexican and the Orsoni you get from um, Wits and Mosaics. Um, that'll take you to all the different sites that they have. And they have both the, um, the Italian and the Mexican. And then uh, Di Mosaico has the MDM. And they also have um, B cuts as well. B cuts are larger pieces that I'll break down. So this is a B cut. And I'll take this and break it down into smaller pieces. Um, if you mentioned it, I missed it. Will you grout this? No, this will not be grouted. Uh, so it's important to make sure that I get a nice um, surface of thin set underneath each tile so you don't see the substrate through it. Um, the, the thing about, in fact, I'm going to bring this closer. Let me take this down and show you. All right, I'm going to flip this. You can see all the variation in height. Oops, hold on. There we go. Can't, can't rotate while recording. Um, you could see all the variation in height. It's, it's subtle. It's close to being flat, but there's still some variation to it. And um, you want that because if you look, you could see the, the light reflects off of uh, the different facets of the top of the tile. And if I were to grout this, you lose all that luster. So, um, you know, it's nice to not have it grouted. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take you over here to the Asian garden. This is the first Asian garden that I did. And you can see it's not grouted. And you can see the light reflects off of it. So this will show you kind of what I'm modeling this next one off of. 
So you can see the design on this one. And that's it. Anybody have any questions? Let's scroll back a little bit, see if there's any others. All right. Well, that's it. My thin set's pretty well gone for the day. So I'm going to go ahead and, and shut this down and um, keep working later. And I'll keep doing videos for you guys. Have a great day. This will, this video will be in the announcements, um, which is where I keep all my videos. And uh, I also have a YouTube channel, Mosaic Mentoring. How long did it take you to complete? The, the first Asian garden took me three months. Um, looking at this, this is a total of probably four, five, maybe eight hours worth of work right now. So that'll give you an idea as to how long this is going to take. I figure it'll take another three months. I worked on the first Asian garden every single day. And um, so today in the, what, two hours that I've been working, two and a half hours, I got all of this and then part of that and then all of this. Obviously, these go much slower once I get to this background stuff this kind of stuff, it goes a lot quicker because those are full pieces. So it just depends on the detail. Um, I like to mix in the, the fine detail with the larger pieces in the background and it just makes it, uh, makes certain areas go quicker. You can see I'm mixing in different colors or different values. So that's it. All right, guys, have a great day. Thanks for watching.